I'm very happy to be here in Italy. I've been coming to Italy for 20 years to teach. I first came here uh, in 1990. And I've been teaching in Europe since uh, 1985 and teaching in several countries in Europe. And Italy has been always, been, I've always appreciated how much the people here in Italy open up to this work. We have more teachers here in Italy than in any other country in the world. And we have teachers all over the world, but more here in Italy. And uh, so I really feel very much, very happy to be here with my Italian family, my Italian water family. At the very beginning of Watsu, I also developed wanting to bring back onto, I also developed a form on land that I call Tansu. I wanted to bring back onto land the kind of holding and containment that we have in the water in Watsu. And so I developed Tansu at that, uh, at the same year I first started developing Watsu. And I've been teaching Tansu ever since. But recently, in the last five years, we've developed a new form of Tansu that is even more accessible to the general public. People are comfortable in the position. We've made a very simple form. People can learn uh, some of it in a four-hour class. And in a weekend, they can learn a, a complete form of it. And it was partly, that has interwoven along with my development of the Watsu, it's come back because in the Tansu, we learned how important the containment is. And people in positions where their whole body was contained uh, really appreciated how much, how safe they felt in those positions because of the containment. So I've, that's helped me to bring the containment more back into the water in this new uh, tandem. The tandem watsu that I just demonstrated is just one stage in a long development, long evolution of watsu that began 30 years ago. At that time, I was teaching Zen Shiatsu, which emphasizes stretching. It's more important than working on points. And in stretching in Zen Shiatsu, it is said the energy is brought to the surface. So when I started floating people in warm water, stretching them, I felt a lot of energy and I started moving them around a lot in the water and uh, and people were really enjoying it so I gradually developed it. I had to learn to slow down a bit because it was too fast for a lot of people and I developed something I call the water breath dance where we connect to the breath and then we do all our movements to the breath after that. And so Watsu has evolved over years. I have, there's a form that practitioners use that we've developed and classes for that. I've also recently developed what I call an explorer's path. So people who are not practitioners can join with others. They don't have to learn a sequence, but they're just exploring how to bring moves into a flow. And they start learning how to make a flow and bring moves into a flow and explore together. In that process, I developed a tandem moment in a round where they were work three people were working together and they came to a tandem. And then we started moving, exploring with the tandem more, and we realized that if you have two people working on someone and they're both doing something, then the person feels confused and feels, and, be, and it's, it's not so pleasant. So we had to develop it so that one person was always supporting and the other person was exploring, was the one who was doing the moves. And so what you just, what I just demonstrated was the development out of that. In Zen Shiatsu, we learn that the energy that's moving through the body, through the meridians, comes more to the surface when we stretch someone. And that helps release that energy and balance its movement through the body. 
And we could feel that as we were stretching people in the water, there was more energy. So I combined stretching with the rhythms of the energy I felt being released while I was stretching people. And out of that was the first Watsu. But it was also a very fast Watsu. It was moving people a lot. There wasn't much stillness. People sometimes got dizzy. There was a lot. And it was hard to teach others, too. And I was having my students want to learn to do it, but it was hard to teach all the stretches and moves when it was so wild like that. So I developed a, a uh, way of connecting to someone's breath in stillness. And it's the most meditative point right at the beginning of a Watsu. The person who is holding someone in their arms drops into the emptiness at the bottom of the breath and waits until they feel the person getting lighter in their arms and then they start breathing in. And there's a feeling of being drawn up out of the emptiness. And in that process, you connect to someone's breathing very deeply and you keep go moving to the rhythm. Once you start moving a person, you can't stop for their breath because you're in movement, but you keep working to the same rhythm. And so with that, we developed uh, what we call the transition flow, which is a way of very smoothly moving a person into all the positions we use in Watsu. And, uh, and we trained a lot, we've trained people a lot of in that transition flow, I keep a registry of all the students around the world that have studied for the last 20 years. And on that registry, we have people from over 70 different countries that have come to study Watsu and have studied uh, pretty much the transition flow, the moves that, and are applying it now in spas and clinics around the world for many different conditions in clinics. And we have, now we have a special form of Watsu that focuses on applying it to conditions that occur on, on the therapeutic level. And I've always been interested also in how the work can, just seeing people picking up someone and floating them for the first time, there's so much connection, so much potential in that connection, that I always wanted to make it available to everybody, not just to practitioners and therapists. And so I've been developing alongside the practitioner path, I've been developing another path that I call the explorer path, where people can just come together and without an instructor, I have set up a format rather than a form. The format works with groups of three and they explore together. Each one has one move to explore, but they have many possible ways to use the move. And so as a team, they explore together and they have a lot of fun. They try all the different things out, a lot of feedback. And then they do a round in which each one receives from the two others. And as they're receiving, the person who's giving gets to explore how they can put the move they've been exploring, what form of that move best fits into a flow. So they're learning to work things into a flow without a sequence. And then they, after each one of the two floating someone has worked each side, then the two get together and float them for a little bit together, what I call a tandem. I developed this new form of tandem watsu, which we now have people who are offering it in spas as a 30-minute offering with two people working, which can be more profound than a 60-minute offering with one person. So we're trying to make it, we're making it available to spas for people that are coming to have that experience so they can have both experiences. It, it moves people into a really new dimension, and it's because of the containment. 
Watsu has always had containment. Holding is a form of containment. People have to be held in the water. And they're not used to being held this way, and they go to very deep levels and just from the holding. In the tandem, we have more containment. We have two people, the other person supporting and the person who's working. So the person feels totally contained. Now, the stretches I'm doing are even stronger than the first Watsu 30 years ago when I was stretching people as hard as I could and using my body to contain the powerful stretches. Now, with someone else helping contain, the stretches are even more powerful. But instead of using the energy that's being released by the stretches, like I used to, instead of using it to move all over the pool and start moving energy all over the pool, we just stay with the person and so that they can feel the energy in their own body. And they benefit a lot from just opening up canals and channels or energy moving through their own body. And often, when we come to the end of it, we're holding at both ends of the of the spine, basically supporting at the hara, which is the abdomen, one hand here, the other person at the head, and almost always they, the person at the head can feel a lot of energy moving up, but the person feels it's receiving too. We come to that stillness. energie completamente diverse, un'energia che mi sosteneva e che sentivo come un'energia femminile che mi dava sicurezza, mi dava con, come posso dire, contenimento e invece un'energia maschile molto dinamica, molto attiva che muoveva l'energia dentro il mio corpo e l'energia muovendosi negli stretching, ma insomma adesso io non ricordo esattamente tutte le posizioni che sono avvenute, ma ricordo come sentivo muovere l'energia dentro il mio corpo e sentivo che partiva il movimento dalle gambe, dalla parte bassa, dalle anche, dalla parte bassa del mio corpo saliva lungo la colonna vertebrale e si diffondeva proprio in tutto il corpo. E questo doppio, eh, doppia sensazione energetica era molto... Ehm, era completa, come posso dire, mi dava una sensazione di maggiore sicurezza, per esempio, di quando si riceve normalmente da una persona sola e eh, di una maggiore intensità del movimento, di, dell'energia che si muoveva dentro, dentro il mio corpo. Durante la sessione sono rimasta molto consapevole, ma molto consapevole non di quello che loro facevano, ma del, di cosa io sentivo, delle mie sensazioni e di questi movimenti energetici. E sentivo il mio corpo che mano a mano, proprio come un, a momenti successivi, si sbloccava, rimuoveva dei blocchi, dei blocchi nella schiena, nel collo, fisici proprio. Eh, è, stato, è stato veramente molto bello, molto, molto intenso, molto potente.